we're continuing on with radical equations now. And you see this is another complicated one. I have a radical symbol, and it has inside it variables. But I also have those same variables elsewhere in the equation. And when you see variables appearing both inside and outside the square root sign, it, it tends to make things a little more complicated. So, remember your training. Very first step, isolate the radical. Okay, you should always be on the lookout for how you can get the radical by itself. Once you get the radical alone, you can square both sides and get rid of the radical. And that makes everything nice. So I'm going to start with my equation, which already is nicely isolated. I have the radical by itself. And I'm going to square both sides. If you remember, squaring is the inverse of square roots. So that 2 in the exponent cancels out the radical. And what I get left over is... 5 delta plus 6 equals delta squared. Now, this is a quadratic equation. It doesn't look like it. But the reason I say it's quadratic is because we have a squared term, and we have a term that's not squared. And when you see that combo, what you want to do is factor this equation. And I'm going to just move everything over to one side. Okay, I've rewritten this equation now so that everything's on one side and I have 0 on the other side. And now it's time to factor it. So if you are a pro at factoring, great. If not, remember your tools. We can use the big X here for an example. Uh, the first, let me use some different colors so it's clear what I'm doing. I'm multiplying the first and last terms together, okay? And that gives me negative six. Then I take the middle term, that's negative five. And then I'm looking for two things, two numbers, which multiply to negative six, but they add to negative five. So I think we're gonna pick negative 6 and positive 1. And that's the only pair that'll work. If you try 3 and 2, there's no combo that'll work out for you. So that means negative 6 and positive 1 go in here. Okay, we still have that delta. And our solutions are going to be these two things, delta equals 6. And let me back up, show you where these are coming from, just as a reminder. This right here, to find the solution to that, we say, uh, we rewrite it, we rewrite this factor, delta minus 6, and we say that equals 0, which means delta equals 6. And likewise over here, delta plus 1 equals 0, so that means delta equals negative 1. So there are my two solutions, delta equals 6, delta equals negative 1. You may think you're done, we're not. The reason radical equations, another reason radical equations are a real pain in the neck, is you have to plug these solutions back into the original um, equation to see if they work. And sometimes radicals are just sneaky little things. They don't work, and it may not be your fault. You may have done everything right, and it's still wrong. That's called extraneous, which we talked about that in class. So I'm going to write my equation for uh, delta of 6, or I don't like that colon right there. Let's just say delta equals 6. What's my equation? It's going to be the square root of... Let's see. Uh, well, 5 times 6 plus 6 equals 6. Let's see if that's true. So that's the square root of 30 plus 6 equals 6. And the square root of 36 equals 6. Yeah, that looks good. So I've got at least one solution that works. Let's check the other one. Delta equals negative 1. Okay, so square root of 5 times negative 1 plus 6 equals negative 1. Okay, so the square root of negative 5 plus 6 equals negative 1. And that means that's the square root of 1 equals negative 1. And you may be thinking at this point, well, sure, the square root of negative of 1 is negative 1, right? The square root of 1, if you remember, is plus or minus 1. But that's not really what the equation is saying. Take a close look here. What this thing says is the positive square root. That's what's written there. It doesn't say the positive or negative square root, right? It's not, it's not plus or minus. That's not the case here. This equation says the positive square root. And when I take the positive square root of 1, it's 1. And that does not equal negative 1. So that is a big old extraneous solution. Okay, that's the word we use for these things. So if you find an equation that has two solutions, make sure to check them both. One of them might be extraneous, in which case... Don't even mention it in the solutions. Do not list it. In this case, we would just say x equals 6. That is our answer to the problem. If you have two extraneous solutions, 
you say DNE, right, does not exist. 